Hey there, Storm fans. It's Bryant Cook, and today we're playing a donation deck from our good friend Ari, who is a member of the Stormtrooper tier. With that tier, you get 50% off donation decks, and well, this is Ari's second deck in two weeks, because they want to see this sweet deck from Killa B from Magic Online. Killa B is the person driving the innovation behind the deck we're playing today called the Riddler. The idea is that we're abusing cool discard effects like Riddlesmith here, that says whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Well, why is discarding a card good? We're an Echo of Aeons based deck, which means we get it into the graveyard so we can flash it back for two and a blue. But we also have this card containment construct. So whenever you discard a card, you may exile it. You don't have to, but you may. And if you do, it goes underneath containment construct and you can play that card this turn. So if you draw four cards and then discard your hand, but then you can play it, this is better than Ancestral Recall. Breakthrough becomes better than and better than Ancestral Recall, but it requires a little bit of work. So when you use something like Lion's Eye Diamond, it actually just becomes Black Lotus. And now you can start to see the strength of playing these discard effects, which is really, really interesting. We also have a backdoor plan of winning with Urza's Saga, which is pretty sweet. So the idea is that we're going to cast a whole bunch of storm spells. Uh, well, storm spells, I should, that's technically not accurate. We're going to cast a whole bunch of artifacts into this Aquavion to create storm. And then we cast our single storm spell, Grape Shot. And that's how we look to win most games. In this sideboard, we have a Singleton Silence. And I'll be honest, I imagine this is just for combo matchups, but I'm not quite sure. If it, you could board it in to protect your creatures against removal as well. I think that's pretty interesting. The thing that I think throws me off a little bit here, and I've been playing Magic for a very long time, so this might be one of those heuristics that's no longer true. But when we look at the main deck, we have four Riddlesmith, four Echo of Aeons, four Breakthrough, and a Singleton Hull Breacher. That's 13 blue cards. The old rule of Legacy was that you aren't allowed to play Force of Will unless you have 20 or more blue cards. Even when you're boarding up to Force of Will, and maybe even Mind Break Trap, so let's say you, you're adding in five, you're only going up to 18. That's assuming you're not boarding out any of the blue cards. That's a little bit low for my taste. I think that you might want to reconsider uh, some of the other cards in the deck if that is the case and what you really want to be doing. So instead of running Burning Inquiry, for example, you could run a blue discard spell. I'm not sure what that one would be, it could be something like a careful study. Uh, there's probably other effects that might even be better. You could run another copy of Hole Breacher. That would be interesting to go well with your Echo of Aeons. I don't have a perfect solution, but I do think that this deck is a little bit light on blue cards, so I'd like to see this changed. Plus, with all the artifacts we have here, you could even start to look at things like Thought Cast or even Thought Monitor, and those would be pretty sweet. Plus, they're blue. I know that they don't go well with the discard theme, but... I do think you have enough artifacts for affinity to be relevant. And when we look at the rest of the sideboard, we have two copies of Carpet of Flowers, a card that we play in the Epic Storm, and uh, an Ancient Grudge or Grape Shot. I'm sure Killa B has played this deck enough to know exactly how all these effects are reused. I don't have a sideboard guide, so today I'm going to be guessing. So if I'm wrong, please bear with me. I'm sort of learning as I go while I play this deck. This will be my second time ever playing it. I have uploaded it once previously. Uh, that video is on the channel. I think its title is like, this deck is so much fun or something like that. And that's definitely true. This deck is a blast. And I hope that you get to see that today. Well, I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the first round. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as the shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Hey there, welcome to the first round. We are on the play with the Riddler. Here we have the namesake of, namesake of the deck, Riddlesmith. We have two artifacts to enable Metalcraft from Ox Opal, and we have these uh, discard spells. That said, Riddlesmith is the wrong creature if you're looking to 
have a bunch of discard spells in your opening hand because you'd want containment construct, not the riddle smith. So do we keep this? I think we probably just have better sixes. Don't be afraid to mulligan. This deck is powerful. So here we have Hull Breacher plus Riddle Smith, which is cute. Um, the problem here is that we don't have an artifact for Opal. To enable Opal, that is. Um, I think we keep this and just put the defense grid on the bottom and hope that our opponent isn't on a blue deck. There's a Saga. We're just going to pass the turn immediately. Mountain. Okay. So they're on Painter. A little bit scary. Take a draw here. Grave Shot. Not really a card we need at this particular moment. Play the Riddlesmith. Let's see if we can play the Lotus Petal and the Mox Opal into some better cards. Ooh, they're tanking here on the Riddlesmith. They might have Samin Spirit Guide plus Pyroblast. And they do counter it with this Samin Spirit Guide into Red Blast. Okay, we're passing the turn here. In a four in hand, they play their own copy of Urza Saga. And they're passing. Take a draw. We hit Diamond. I wonder what sort of action spell I can get here. I think it's just the bobble, unfortunately. Hmm. Do I play out the whole breacher? I mean, I might as well, I think. They have another saga on top. No echo of Aeons here. Not yet, at least. Draw off the bobble. Breakthrough, okay. City of Traitors. Three cards remain in hand. Let's attack with the whole breacher. They make a construct. Are you offering a trade? They are, okay. Maybe that was a bad attack. I'm not sure. I actually don't have a whole lot going on here. So I'm going to play out this Oval, which may seem dumb, but it's actually kind of free because I'm going to break through where X is equal to 1, and I would be discarding it anyway. So it's just fine, in my opinion. That was terrible, though. Um, I guess, yeah, sure. Bobble you. Goblin Welder. So they didn't play Welder, which means that they likely have a Blast in their hand. They pick up a Soul Guide Lantern. Ooh. Okay. Are we dead? Uh, we have Urza Sagas that can win the game, but that's it. That's obnoxious. Draw for turn. Okay. Bobble you. They're still choosing to not play the uh, Goblin Welder. I think we've already lost this one. That's really, really annoying. I don't think I'm realistically going to be able to beat them down to the Construct beforehand. Yeah, I'm just going to pick this one up. I value my time. Uh, maybe I was supposed to break through where X is equal to 2. I wanted to keep some mana open in case I hit a 2 mana payoff like Containment Construct or Defense Grid to protect my like Echo of Aeons. That didn't happen, so it looked worse, but I don't think it was unrealistic. We probably want these Hydro Blasts. Word out the Breacher. Maybe a Defense Grid. Bring in grave shot number two as well. Pour down another grid. Let's try this out. Game two, we're on the play. We have access to a turn one defense grid, but nothing else really going on. I think we could probably do better. Is this better? I'm going to mulligan. 
before. So I can gamble for uh, Echo Vans, but it doesn't do anything else. I'm going to go to three. Guess we're keeping. Um, sure. I mean, this is the best hand I've seen so far. Not even close. Pass. And wisely, they're just holding up uh, Red Elemental Blast. I think my best draw is probably something like Defense Grid. Yeah, and you can tell that they're holding open the Pyroblast here. Come on, Defense Grid, please. Pass. There's a Saga. Goblin Engineer. Painter's Servant. They don't have an artifact quite yet. Draw. Have to pass. These draws have been terrible. There's the Saga moves up to two counters. All right, and now even if I draw Defense Grid, they can um, play a Pyroblast through the Defense Grid. Sheesh. This has been terrible. I wonder, I don't know how well their interacts with containment. Like, if I discard my hand at Lion's Eye Diamond, can they weld this out and then I can't play the spells? I mean, realistically, I've already lost this game, so I'm sort of interested to find out how that works. Right, let's add three blue. Auto yield. I mean, I'm going to get blown out of the water here. I've already accepted that I've lost this game. I just want to see the interaction. Let's cast a breakthrough. X is equal to one. Interesting, they let me keep it. Let's turn off the auto yields. Do I keep the other construct then? I do not want to exile Echo of Aeons. I want to leave that in the graveyard. Hmm. So my fear here is if I play this containment construct, well, they can weld this out now, but also if they just pyroblast me, all these cards get exiled anyway. And here we see the pyroblast. Pass the turn. They make a construct. Murder's dead. Uh, so they can go get Grindstone, Weldon Painter Servant, and uh, that's a good game. They play a land first, sure. All right, they're just showboating here. I'm going to concede. I was going to give them the, uh, the satisfaction of just grindstoning me out, but I'm not going to sit here while they do that. All right, we're zero and one. Round two coming up. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Let's bounce back. That was a tough first round. Here we have an Echo of Aeons. We have access to Lions that I'm in in three turns, as well as Triple Bobble. I think we keep this and we just look to play the Urza Saga game this time with a backdoor of Echo of Aeons. They play Island and pass the turn. Wonderful Mirage Basic they have going on over here. Breakthrough, Urza Saga. Bobble. And again. And again. Pass the turn. They play planes and pass back. We'll take a draw. 
Oh my, it's Lines of Diamond. I think we're still just on the Saga plan for now. They play a Brainstorm. No land three, and they're just passing back. Let's make a huge construct. I have to imagine that they have uh, unused swords to plowshare somewhere in their hand. Mox Opal will create another construct. Search with this Urza Saga. I don't think we really need anything, so let's just grab a Mishra's Bobble. Play the Opal. Attempt to get in there for seven. Aya. Sword supply shares it is. Look at their top card. Prismatic ending. Okay, let's cash in some of these uh draw spells, I guess. Ponder. Okay. We know that the construct isn't living, so it doesn't really matter if we keep those in play. Look at that. Now we have a glorious hand. They ending our construct, and they did find land three off that ponder. Defense grid. Five cards in hand. It resolves. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, party hardy. From Mox, print the gamble, I think. Blow to blue, play this opal. Break through where X is equal to one. We're going to discard everything but the containment construct. Let's play the construct. Add three blue. Spin the wheel on Echo of Aeons. We do have a land drop available. Opal, they're at 20. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't supposed to play the Opal. I'm. That's just a missed trigger, I guess. Yeah, that just seems like a misplay on my part. Okay, well, we have to win now. The Grape Shot's underneath it. So we'll play the Riddlesmith. Yeah, this Opal should just be tucked underneath there for now. Missed opportunity. Uh, Riddlesmith. Discards another Containment Construct. Play the Chrome Mox. No imprint. Right, so we got a free mana out of it. I don't know if that's any good or not, but we have it. All right, Storm 14, play the Lotus Petal. This card's a grid. So I have a total of three mana here. And they just conceded. I did not have a lethal grape shot. Okay, sure, I'll take a, a game win. I don't feel like I actually deserve that one, though. Let's switch this over to card view. I probably should have done that sooner. It's the, likely the reason we lost match number one. You know, completely, the card view really mattered. All that good stuff. So we're facing blue-white control. Carpet of Flowers is a card that you really want against Delver decks. It's still fine against blue-white control. We saw Prismatic Ending. The question is, are you looking to remove artifacts from your deck to add in Carpet of Flowers? I think the answer is likely not. Uh, we probably want like one Chain of Vapor to answer something like a Deafening Silence or a Meddling Mage, something along those lines. Probably boarding out this Burning Inquiry. Let's try this out. Maybe the Silence? Hmm. Board out Chrome Mox number three, I guess. Let's try this. Game two, we've opened up an interesting hand here. No protection. No Construct, but it does have Riddlesmith. I think I'm going to try it, but I'm a little bit nervous. Basic Island into Ponder. Does not shuffle. We'll take a draw. Okay. From Mox. I am going to imprint. 
Riddlesmith. Lion's Eye Diamond. Yes. Discard the Chrome Mox. Lotus Petal. Yes. A bobble's a bobble. Bobble. Yes. Ding. I think I'm supposed to keep the uh the lotus petal there. I guess the downside is if I cast the breakthrough, I could find another echo possibly. Mm, I think I'd just rather have the, the petal in play. Let's try spinning the wheel. And it resolves, nice. All right, bobble. Firm is seven. Discard Saga. Play another Lotus Petal. Yes. Another Grid. I'm going to get rid of that. Do I try to play the Defense Grid here? I don't know what the actual right play is, but I am going to try to play it. Storm is 9. They play Force and Negation. But at least a a counter spell. Big fan of that. This is turn one. I've already played my land, so we'll get rid of that. Play another bobble. Turn eleven. Discard the land. Bobble again. Storm twelve. Yes. Okay. Storm thirteen. I mean, we're at the end of the road here. Bobble you. We have a dress down on top. Narset in hand. Okay, and a brainstorm. Cashing in some fresh cards here. Prismatic Vista. On their end step, we'll look at their top card with Mishra's Bobble. And they play a dress down, sure. You've got it. Another nurse set. Let's see if we can make something happen here. Bobble. The issue is if they have another force, we're in a lot of trouble. Play the diamond. Gamble. Grab the Echo. Probably not a whole big of a point here to casting the Breakthrough. Let's just do... Let's just flash back the Echo, I guess. It's from 5. Surgical on Lion's Eye Diamond. Not very kind. Needed that Defense Grid to resolve, clearly. Echo of Aeons. Their pain costs. Another surgical here. Okay. Selects gamble. They're not 15 life. Let's play the construct. And then I'm just going to pass the turn, I think. Look at their top card. Pass the turn. You could argue that maybe I'm supposed to play out... Um, like the bobbles and stuff to play around Narsa, but like the way that my hand is set up is I'm not going to beat Narsa anyway. We draw another bobble. They play Ponder. And they red blast my Riddlesmith. Not very kind. Defense grid. Let's play it. Opponent's at 13 life. Another force. A force, of course. Riddlesmith is back. Back again. Okay, they're at three cards in hand. We got some artifacts. Storm is nine. Breakthrough for zero. Always yes. And then auto yield. Terms 10, but I think 
I mean, I guess I could theoretically cast the Brainstorm. My fear is if I... Or not the Brainstorm, the Breakthrough. My fear is if I accidentally uh, discard the Grape Shot, then can't play it. I found this on the web. Thank you. I did not mean for that to happen, but uh, my watch wanted to get in on the action. Okay, so let's uh, play a bobble here. I wonder if I'm just supposed to play Saga and just say, hey, I'm going to beat you down. It's probably the right choice. Lotus Petal. And then we could sacrifice the Petal to play another copy of Containment Construct and show them who the beatdown deck is. Hiya. Bobble you. He's surgical. Okay. And then another bobble. Pass the turn. So we drew a silence, an echo, and a lotus petal. Ponder. And they just pass after the ponder. Saga goes to two. Lotus Petal, Fisher's Bobble, let's get in. In their upkeep, we're going to have a, an effect here. Silence. Ooh, they just conceded instead. But hey, a win's a win. We are now one in one with the Riddler in Legacy. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round three on the play, once again, still playing the Riddler. Here we have a Tromon Echo of Aeons. I will keep that. Our opponent's username is Tron is okay. That's certainly an opinion. I know a lot of modern boomers would disagree. That said, I feel like in this day and age, Tron is very okay in modern. It has been hit a couple times in Pauper. Recently, it regained Expedition Map, but uh, it's sort of fallen off a cliff in terms of popularity. It just doesn't keep up with Affinity or Fairies or even the Boros stack in today's age of Pauper. It feels a little bit underpowered. All right, well, back to Legacy. They've kept six cards. We're going to play an Urza Saga. Lion's Eye Diamond, that's what's up. Mishra's Bobble. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Mishra's Bobble. Sacrifice this for a red mana and cast Gamble. Grab an Echo of Aeons, and let's spin that wheel, floating a blue mana. Storm is seven. It resolves, okay. Ox Opal. Am I supposed to Grape Shot here? Hmm. Grape Shot into Huge Construct? I mean, I have no clue what they're playing. All right, let's uh, make you take 12. Let's uh, look at their top card. Volcanic Island, huh? Probably Delver. Card in hand. Brainstorm. Okay, I'm just going to pass from here. We get two Bobble Triggers, an Echo of Aeons, we play a Polluted Delta, another Volcanic, so they're most likely on Is It Delver, 
and they cast a main phase brainstorm. Looks like they're passing. Saga goes to two and another land. A little bit awkward. We'll just pass. Misty Rainforest. Two open mana for Delver Secrets. More information, yes please. Okay, let's create a construct here. They're at six life. We have a six six. We will make another construct. And now it's a seven seven. Now we can search our library. Grab a Lion's Eye Diamond, and they've conceded the game, so we're up a game over Delver, the boogeyman of the format. Bringing this carpet of flowers. I think you... Is the, the Hydro Blaster likely for Maddening Hex? So that makes sense. Get rid of this Burning Inquiry. We definitely want the carpets. I wish I knew what to board out here. We're at 63 cards at the moment. Am I supposed to just board out Chromox? I don't know. I feel like Holbreacher is probably a pretty easy candidate. We have like one Chrome, one Opal. Am I allowed to do that? Probably need the Opal for bringing in carpet. It's, it is a colored source. I wonder if I'm allowed to board out a breakthrough here. Hmm. Well, no one's here to stop me, so I guess that's the game plan. Game two. Here we have an interesting hand where we have the Lion's Eye Diamond, we have Echo of Aeons, but we don't have protection. But we do have this gamble. I'm willing to risk it here. Let's see what we can do. Opponents on the play, they play a Volcanic Island. Main phase that Brainstorm. Okay. Is that something a Tron player would do? I'm just joking. I'm sure there are people, too. All right, they've put two cards back, and it's our turn. Take a draw. Riddlesmith. Lotus Petal. Am I being dazed? Resolves. We'll play a Lion's Eye Diamond. Opal. Hmm, I think I want to play out the bobble. Containment construct. That resolves. So if I add red here. Yes. Now we want to say no to Echo of Aeons. And then yes to the gamble. Play gamble. Force of Will on Gamble. I guess so. Um, that stunk. May have a daze. Looks like I'm going to lose everything. You draw a gamble off of the Urza's Bobble trigger. Um, yeah, it is Urza's Bobble. Okay. Blooded Strand. And another brainstorm. They play Delver Secrets. We'll take our turn. Here's the saga. We'll just pass the turn. Delver Secrets. No flip. Wasteland. Pretty brutal here. The Wasteland means that we can't use Urza Saga to then find a Lion's Eye Diamond. They play Maddening Hex instead. We do have two Blue Blasts in our deck, but we'd have to... Ooh, here it is, but we can't cast it. <laughs> okay. Um, unfortunately, I just have to pass here. Delver Triggers. No flip. I have been wastelanded by Urza Saga. There's a Merc Tide. I know that they have a Daze in hand. They do not attack with Delver. Uh, this is risky. 
Okay. I take the full six damage for this terrible chrome box. If they daze me here, I probably can't win, and they do. All right, we're going to game three. I don't think we want to re cyborg at all. I'm just going to hit submit once again. Game three on the play versus Delver. Okay, this seems pretty reasonable to me. Keep. Opponent has a pretty fast mulligan to six. Lotus Petal. And then we will play Carpet of Flowers, a permanent mana source. It resolves, or is this Bobble? Let's look at a card in your hand. Ledger Shredder. We'll pass the turn. Okay. Then we get a Bobble Trigger. Another copy of Chromox. Perfect. Scalding Tarn. Take a draw. Another Bobble. Let's just cycle here. Need to find an actual payoff. Force of Will. So we know that they have Force of Will plus Ledger Shredder in hand. Gamble. Okay. What are you going to Wasteland? I don't have lands. Lotus Petal. I'm just going to pass the turn. One has seven cards. They play Brainstorm. Surgical on my Lotus Petal. Well, they will get one from my hand, unfortunately. It looks like they're just passing back. We'll take a draw, another copy of Hydro Blast. Just pass the turn. Run it back up to seven. They redrew a card that they put back with the Brainstorm, and they play Ledger Shredder. Mishra's Bobble. They get a Knife Trigger. Discard Steam Vents. Looks at her top card. Draw. Mana Confluence. Hmm. It's tough because I know that they have Force of Will. And I can't power through it. Play the Confluence. I think I'm supposed to play around Days here. The question is, how do we best do that? Chrome Mox on the stack. Our Chrome Mox resolves. We will imprint this Hydro Blast. Riddlesmith. They get a Knife Trigger. We discard Delver of Secrets. Riddlesmith on the stack. They force it. Pitching Merc Tide. I think I'm going to take my chance here on resolving Echo of Aeons. Lions of Diamond. Ouch. Gamble. They have another force. Bummer. They could have got my Lions of Diamond too, but... I don't know. They didn't want it, I guess. They have two cards left in hand. Shredder is a 2-4. They destroy my Mana Confluence with the Wasteland. I'm at 17, and they pass with three cards. Breakthrough. Let's break through where X is equal to 1, so that way I can pay for a daze. Okay, so we found an Echo of Aeons. Mishra's Bobble. They do get a Knife Trigger here. Discard's Mystic Sanctuary. Three cards still in hand. Add three blue. Let's spin the wheel and Echo of Aeons. Storm three. Force number three. Okay. Bobble target you. Wasteland. 
novel triggers, we draw Max Opal. So we took a hit off their Shredder. They wasted their own Volcanic, and now they have one card in hand. We find another Opal. Unfortunately, that doesn't do anything. We have to pass the turn. Pass on the Kerber Trigger once again. Ouch, we go to 13, two cards in hand. Draw, defense grid. Might as well play that. Grid resolves, but only after three copies of Force do. We need to find something. A gamble would actually give us an Echo of Aeons. We play another Wasteland. Draw for turn. Construct. I'm at 11, so it is looking a little... Like, I don't have a whole lot of time left, I guess is what I'm really trying to say here. Shredder gets in for two. We fall the nine life. Draw. Bobble. Play it. Let's look at their top card. Volcanic Island. On the aggro deck. We get the draw off Bobble. Ancient Tomb doesn't really help us here. They attack, we go to seven. They have four in hand. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Pass the turn. Almost halfway through our deck. We've barely seen any action. We're at five. Draw. There we go. Attack with the containment construct. Okay, Riddlesmith. Lion's Eye Diamond. They do get a connive trigger off their ledger shredder here. Riddlesmith. Yes. Discard the ancient tomb. Yes, I'd like to use its ability. Diamond resolves. Play an opal. Triggers the Riddlesmith once again. Yes. Discard Riddlesmith. Yes. Put a red just because of gamble. Bobble's a bobble. Play it. We have a real chance to win here. Yes. Hmm. Let's add some blue. Maybe I should have done this sooner, playing the extra Riddlesmith. Might be an oversight on my part. Let's go to three, play the other Riddlesmith. Bobble. Yes. There's the gamble. I think we can actually just get Grape Shot and win from here. Cast Gamble. Grab the Grape Shot. Select Yes. They're at 9, Storm 9, Cast Grape Shot. My chip damage from the Containment Construct mattered. I could have cast at least another spell, but... Hey, a, a couple of it mattered. They're on the, I hope they target my Ledger Shredder plan. You think I'm going to cast Grape Shot and target your Ledger Shredder? Get out of here. Okay, well, that was uh, a game for sure. We're 2 and 1. We just beat the best deck in Legacy with this deck, so you know it's fairly good. Let's see if we can get the last two. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, we're on the draw against Jim. 
When we look at our hand, it has lands and spells. Does that mean it's a keep? Not necessarily, especially not in a format like Legacy, where things are super powerful. When we look at what our hand actually does, it's a whole lot of nothing. You have Containment Construct, but nothing to discard your hand or gain card advantage. You can make Urza Saga, but that's really slow and doesn't even play well with the one pseudo piece of action you have. I think you're just supposed to take a mulligan. This hand doesn't do anything. You have double Mox Opal and only a single artifact to enable Metalcraft. Yikes, it looks like we're, uh, you know, going down to five. All right, so we've now selected our five, or have our five, I should say. Uh, so we have to put two back. I think it's pretty easily grape shot. And then maybe Chrome Mox. The problem with that is you can't use a Riddle Smith. And you're pretty far away from Echo. So I think you're actually supposed to just bottom both of these and keep the Chrome Mox. Although I don't love it. All right, Jim, what are you playing? Hopefully not islands. Uh, don't think that this doc or this hand is going to beat Blue Red Delver. Bobble. Bobble. They're going to daze my bobble. It's a, a choice you can make. Sure. Chrome Mox. They're Force of Will and Chrome Mox pitching expressive iteration. I will not have spells. That's what I was just told. Volcanic Island, three cards in hand. Ponder. Lion's Eye Diamond off the top is our best draw. Another Bobble. Mox Opal. Hmm. I mean, I can put Echo to the Graveyard, but I don't think that's actually good. I'm just going to pass until I get a little bit more information. Wasteland. They have three cards still. They shuffled off their Ponder. Channeler, sure. Draw. Ding. Add a red. Play the Opal. Cast Gamble. We have two cards. Select Echo of Aeons. Let's flash it back. Storm count four. Okay, let's play a grid. Forcible pitching expressive iteration. I think I just need to play out all these bobbles and try to draw a new hand. Sure. Have the full play set of Mishra's Bobble on the table. Another channeler in hand. Volcanic. Draw two. Diamond is good. Hole Breacher. This card has felt a little clunky so far. Like, it's probably really good while you're winning, but before you get to that point, it's been a little tough to cast. Another channeler, four cards. Volcanic Island, three cards. Brainstorm. They kept a card on top. Let's get a look at it here with the Mishra's Bobble. Days, sure. They missed their attack. There's two Bobble triggers, one for me, one for them. We know that they have a day so we need to play through that gamble first one we want to get is echo and now on this gamble we can go get another lion's eye diamond they're dazing ooh ah uh, that was uh not ideal i clicked a little too quickly and I wasn't able to sacrifice my Lion's Eye Diamond. I thought I was clicking through the Surveil trigger and not on the days, but here we are. So that's been countered because I'm a dummy. And now I'm going to just try to resolve this echo. 
Second D's. Oh, so the punish. That's just my own fault. If I didn't click so quickly on the surveil stuff. Yikes, and there's a dragon on top of their deck. We're drawing a garbage chrome mox. Ay, ay, ay. They play Ponder. They surveil and keep the card on top twice. We're probably just dead here. Their Dragon's Rage Channelers have become delirious. Ouch. We're at 12 and they have a card they wanted to keep on top. I don't even know how we could realistically win this. Even if I were to draw... I guess if I drew Breakthrough... And then I break through for one, drawing a Lion's Eye Diamond plus Echo. So they're going to attack for six. I'll go to six. Then it looks like they were trying to cast a Merc Tide and then realized their mistake. So they went to combat first, and now Merc Tide Regent is going to come down. I believe they're out here is just break through into the nuts. There it is, a big dragon. Not breakthrough. So my punt on the gamble slash days interaction with Lion's Eye Diamond cost me there. I do know that Lion's Eye Diamond cannot be used to pay for days. I just clicked through it. It was an honest mistake. Carpet of Flowers coming in. We want these Hydro Blasts. Get rid of the Burning Inquiry. Shave a Chrome Mox. Get rid of this Hull Breacher. Let's try a breakthrough again. Submit. Once again, I don't know if this is a matchup where you want the silence or not. I have to imagine it's tough to cast against the Wasteland Days deck, especially when they're going after your artifacts. That said, it protects your stuff from Blue Elemental Blast, Pyroblast, Lightning Bolt on your creatures. I mean, it seems good. I just don't know how to board with this deck. Wait, do I take out another breakthrough? Seems wrong. Shave maybe an Urza's Bob? Oh, it's going to make me submit here. Yeah, okay. I had already clicked submit, so it's my own fault. This hand just says we're all in on Urza's Saga. Mulliganing super low did not work in game number one, so I think I'm going to try it here. Bobble. Or, I'm sorry, Mox. And then the Bobble. And they have Wasteland. Can't win. Yep. Look at their top card. Force of Negation. Defense Grid. Opal. Please Resolve. Defense Grid. And it does. Look at a random card. Blaining Bolt. Okay. Draw a card off Bobble. Ancient Tomb. Under. Need to keep this Mishra's Bobble around so that way the Opal has Metal Craft. Containment Construct. Okay. I'm going to break through for two here. Discard the rest. Okay. We got their top card. Wasteland. Ah, that hurts. I need I needed this ancient tomb. We know that they have a lightning bolt, so if I want to play the containment construct, I need to play and use it all in one swift turn. They don't play Wasteland. Come on, deck. Please give me Gamble. Okay. I think I'm supposed to play the Riddlesmith here. Or is that just a punt? Yeah, that might have just been a punt. It doesn't actually do me any good. I mean, it forces them to... Okay, they... Maddening Hex. Yep. 
complete a containment construct, I get to trigger the Riddlesmith at 14. Yes. Discard the Chrome Mox. Get in there. Do I want to play? I feel like I might. Let's add a red. I might play the bobble. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to definitely play this Riddlesmith. Ready to take six again off this. Okay. Pick two. That's not bad. Another construct. Riddle me this. Defense grid. Yes. So now the bobble happens. Play another construct. Grid down. Yes. Gamble can't use that. All right. Well, we do have eight power on the board now, which is kind of nice. Activate the bobble. Of course, the will's their top card. We do know that they have a lightning bolt in hand already. We also knew about that wasteland. Ancient Tomb down. Draw for turn. Mana Confluence. Let's just beat down. Show them who the boss is. Hiya. Can't cast Lightning Bolt. You're at nine. Seven cards in hand. We know about Lightning Bolt, Force of Negation, and Force of Will. Three mana here. Is this just a big dragon? Meltdown. Yikes. That was not good. Back. They're at five. Don't think I'm going to get this one now. Two mana. There's a Murktide region. Yeah, pretty sure they've got me here. Play a Lion's Eye Diamond, I guess. Casual 5 damage, no big deal. Yes. A Daze. So if I pay, I go to 6. I'm dead already. Let's just pick it up. I, I mean, they have double force here. What am I going to do? Uh, Alright, we're 2 and 2, 1 match left. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round with the Riddler. We're on the draw. Here we do not have Metalcraft. We are one artifact short that we can actually cast. Defense Grid is a two-man artifact when we have no initial mana sources, so I think we're pressured into mulliganing this hand. This seems pretty good to me. I think you're supposed to keep this and bottom the mana confluence. And the reason why you bottom the mana confluence is with Ancient Tomb plus these artifacts, we can play a first turn Riddlesmith into Gamble into Echo. However, it looks like our opponent's playing Moonstompy. Oh, this card doesn't matter. What a blank piece of cardboard you displayed. Okay, so we'll play Ancient Tomb. Uh, we just need to enable Metalcraft. That's really what we're looking to do here. So, ouch. I will play Riddlesmith. I don't know if it matters the order that I do this in. I guess I should play the Chrome Mox because it's, I think it's just like kind of free to do. Uh, that stinks. I mean, it's good to just have the Chrome Mox and play for Metalcraft purposes. All right, because like we would have discarded the Chrome Mox to the Diamond anyway. We'll grab the Echo. Cast Echo floating a blue mana. Storm 7. Okay. I like where this is going. 
only a single blue, so I can't play another Riddlesmith quite yet. Discard. Bobble. Yes. Discard. Another Bobble. Yes. Discard. From Mox. Yes. Can't cast that yet. Um, could imprint it to the gamble. Let's break through for one. I did not hit something that I need here. Um, I supposed to just keep the gamble and pray that they don't do anything meaningful. Yeah, I think that's it. I just have to keep the gamble. Bobble you. Fury's their top card. Okay. They evoke the Fury Pitching Fable. Okay. They play a City of Traitors, and the first one does not die due to the Blood Sun, and then they play... The red initiative rare creature from Boulder's Gate. Look at their top. Uh, I guess they're about to shuffle, so there's no real point in looking at their top card here because they do get to get a mountain out of their deck. Now I can look at their top card. Professional face breaker. Sure. So we'll draw a card off the bobble here. Echo. Add a red. Play an opal. Keep that one. 50 50 odds. We get to draw something we want here or keep something we want here. I think I want another Riddle Smith. And I missed. Okay. We'll add some blue. Let's flashback Echo. Storm is four. They pitch a spirit guide. Okay. So we have a lot to work with here. Just need to figure out how we want to sequence. I think I want to use both of the blue mana floating because I have this here. Tap this for a blue. Let's play an opal. We're able to then discard an echo. Keep the new one. Did not mean to uh, play that land. That was a, a misclick. I'm sorry. It's kind of late as I record this. I have not played this league that well. Uh, a lot of misclicks. A little bit of sloppy play. Storm's 8. Alright. Storm 9. Containment Construct. Add blue. Add red. Let's flash back echo number three. From 11. Bobbles from 12. Yes. Discard this echo. No. Lotus petals from 13. Yes. Try to land. Okay, uh, let's add a red here, I suppose. Let's play a Mox Opal. Yes. Discard. Keep the new one. Play a Lion's Eye Diamonds from 15. Try to land. Play another Construct. Yes. Try another land. And it's good to put the cards underneath the containment constructs because if you cast another echo, you're removing dead cards from your deck. Can I cast that? Um, no, I can. Or no, I can. So blue. Play opal. Uh, discard the Burning Inquiry, I guess. 
Now we keep this Mox Opal. Play the Hull Breacher. Add three blue. And now we get to actually use the Hull Breacher here to create a bunch of treasures. And it should just be easy peasy. Add a red, cast Gamble, go get that Grape Shot. Okay. Red. Okay, lethal damage coming in. The initiative is no... It's not a competition. Like, it doesn't stand up to Grape Shot. It's just not on the same power level. Grape Shot's just like the best red card in Legacy. Can't tell me otherwise. Take 22 damage and like it. Don't mind my fake trash talk. It's all in good fun. Game two against a Moon Stompy variant or Aggro Stompy. We haven't actually seen any Chalice of the Voids or Trinisters yet, but you have to imagine that they're in there. Probably want forces on the draw. All right, 66 cards. Need to keep the blue count high. Probably board out the defense grids. Pretty easy swap. 62 cards. Goodbye, Burning Inquiry. Is it wrong that I just want to take out a Saga? Probably, right? But I'm going to do it anyway, and you can't stop me. Get out of here. Probably not great against their Moon deck anyway. Well, this hand's interesting. So we can force at least the first, like, big thing. And then Saga can theoretically get us Diamond in three turns. I don't know if I love it, but I'm willing to test it out for the science. They just have a turn one Shatter Skull. Ooh, okay. Uh, that's going to get forced. You can't have that. Draw for turn. Okay, Saga. Bobble. Bobble. Look. Theory. Look again. Simeon Spirit Guide. So we'd like to see a blue card here. Triggers. No blue card. That's dangerous. Okay. So no moon. Not yet, at least. Draw. Hmm. A little annoying. Play the bobble. We get their top card. So they will have mana on their turn to play a moon effect. But I did not draw a blue card. This is one of those things I was talking about in the intro. Having 18 blue cards just is not enough. Are you passing? Really? I feel like there's something weird going on here. Okay. Make another construct. Grab lines at diamond. Game it construct. Discard my hand. Auto yield. This is not auto yesing though. So I am not going to put the echo on. Ooh, they had fairy macabre. That's just mean. I'm going to get wrecked by this fury now. Okay. Play another containment construct, I suppose. And we'll get in for four. So they can kill containment construct, containment construct, and a construct token if they play it correctly. Because it would be one one two, and yep, now I'm down to a single one one. That fairy got me. All right, no need to play out the rest of this. Although now I have to worry about fairy macabre. It's scary. You might be thinking like just flash it back immediately. You have priority. Not when you put a trigger on the stack like containment construct. That is not true. 
Oh, I probably wanted to bring in Hydroblast. Why did I not think of that? That was an obvious oversight. My bad. My bad. That's that's my fault. So that does give you two extra blue cards, bringing you up to 20, I believe. But downside, we're at 63 cards right now. We need to find some stuff to take out. I like a Hull Breacher. Like, I just can't see that card being good. We'll Shape Saga again. On the play. You know what? I'm going to take out another Saga. I, I just don't think they're good here. And I'm not going to keep a Saga-based hand against the Moon Deck anyway. That game, I kind of got punished for doing it. No, this hand doesn't function. Uh, I have a turn to Echo, but I'd lose to a Fairy Macabre. I'm going to go to five. This doesn't do anything meaningful either. So we have Echo, but no Diamond. Should I go to three? I'm going to go to three. Damn. Going to two. Oh, no lines on diamond. Okay. Probably just dead. Play the bobble. Look at your top card. Pass the turn. Ancient tomb. Draw. Pass. Mountain. Chrome Monks, and Prince Fiery Confluence, Trinisphere. I am good to pack it up there. Wow, this, uh, I don't know. I don't think having Urza Saga in my deck at all would have changed that. Like, none of those hands would have been defined by Saga being better. I think one thing that's kind of tough is you're a deck that runs eight colorless sources, out of your 10 land. So you're really relying really heavy on Chromox and Mox Opal to create colored mana sources for you when you run over 20 artifacts. So Chrome Mox isn't always reliable. Plus you have colorless lands, which is kind of tough. I obviously did not have a cyborg guide this league, so I don't want to make too many comments about the deck. That said, I do feel like the blue count for force is kind of low. And I felt like some of the cyborg slots might have been able to be other things. I can see why you want Aether Spellbomb. My concern is that it does not answer Collector Roof, but it's probably fine for pretty much everything else, including Thalia, which you can get off Urza Saga. That said, they have Wasteland in that matchup. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of feedback in general other than... I don't know how I feel about the Burning Inquiry or the Hull Breacher. Coming into this league, I expected to like Hull Breacher a lot more. And then throughout the league, I just realized that it's so clunky and you never usually have three extra mana to cast it. So maybe these could just be general smoothing cards. Uh, I'm not sure what those would be. They could be something like a Faithless Looting or a blue card, like Careful Study for Force. I'm not really sure. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.